friends, how are ya? Welcome back to my channel for a more sit down, chatty, focused type of video. With my channel, I always try to think, what do I have experience in? What do I have knowledge in? What do I know or have gone through that can actually bring value to people? Something that I went through was starting over. And I was like, you know what? People start over several times in their life, whether it be they start a whole new job, a whole new career, or they have to move to a different city, to a different state, to a different country. Or it's inevitable that most of us go through several pretty big breakups in our lifetime, whether that is of a dating relationship or half of us go through a divorce if we get married. Maybe you're changing your major at school. Maybe it's something even smaller of, I just wanna like start fresh, new mindset, really take care of myself. Whatever it is, I can assure you, you're gonna have to essentially start things over in one way or another at some point in your life. So today's video is going to just be how to start over. I crowdsourced a lot of these tips from you guys on my Instagram, so thank you in advance to those of you who contributed over there. I have some really good quotes. And this is just gonna kind of be a smorgasbord of hopefully inspiration, tips, things that help different people start over along the way. Some of these are more applicable to others. And you know what I was thinking actually too, is a lot of times people start over hand in hand. Like if you start a new job, you might have to move for it. Or me, I went through a divorce and I moved states because of that. It's like several big changes at the same time. So some of these things might apply to only some form of change, some might apply to all, but let's get into it. Okay, first things first. If you are having to go through some sort of big change, some sort of start over, take that opportunity to change other things that you've been wanting to try because in my opinion, it is easier to make several changes at once. Maybe you're starting a new job and you've always wanted to be the type of person that takes cycling classes every morning. New job, new schedule anyways. So if your job starts at 9.30, maybe you take that 8 a.m. cycling class and it's like kind of just changing it all at once. This is one thing that I wish somebody had told me, but if you have the luxury of being able to take time off to ease into the transition of change, do it. I could have. I personally had um, the time and the freedom and the savings to take off a little bit of time from work when I was going through my divorce and moving home to Texas and all of that, and I, I didn't. I was afraid. I had this like frugality mindset of, I feel like my life is out of my control. I, I can't fall behind in any other area. You have the flexibility. You can afford to take off two weeks, you know, just like ease into it, take off that time. And I recognize that that is a luxury and like sometimes you don't have that option or that opportunity, but if you do, consider it. This is something that a lot of people said, but it's okay to ask for help. In fact, I think a lot of people like knowing that they're helpful. Transition is hard, change is hard, starting over is hard. So if you are, you know, moving back home to your hometown from the city that you decided to move to and your, your sister lives there. Ask your sister to help watch your kids one weekend so that you can get the house set up. Or there's a lot of different opportunities to ask for help. If you're anything like me, it's hard to put down your pride and actually ask for it. Or it's hard to feel like, I, I don't wanna be a burden. I don't wanna ask anybody to help me. But I can assure you when people ask me for help, I feel so honored and it gives me purpose to help them, and I bet other people feel the same way if you ask them. Change is not gonna just be perfect. Starting over is not gonna just automatically fall into place. It takes time. So I say go into starting over, go into this new job, this new city, this, this new singleness, or whatever it might be, with the mentality of things are gonna feel a little weird for a while three months, six months, a year. And that's just part of the process. I think a lot of people change something, like maybe they quit their job and start a new one. And the first couple months is hard because everything's different. And you could start to go, oh no, I made a mistake. It's pretty dang normal for things to not feel 100% right for the first little bit. So if you go into it with the mindset of this is part of the process, I'm not gonna worry about it feeling perfect at the beginning, then it's just a little easier to grasp. Also, I wish someone told me that, you know, starting over, it, there's a bit of a grief cycle and grief is absolutely not linear. So some days you could feel like, oh my gosh, I've made so much progress. I love this new life. Things are really going great. And then all of a sudden wake up one morning and feel like you took 10 steps backwards and beat yourself up over it. But I think recognizing that that is also normal and healthy really helps you kind of have um, grace with yourself as you navigate newness. One of the biggest questions that I got asked when I moved 
to Texas was how do you find a community? How do you make friends? And I will say for me, a cheat sheet is because I'm a Christian, just like plugging into a church has been like a really easy way. But I was like, what are other ways? If you're not into church, if you, if religion's not your thing, which I totally get. Um, and so I was talking to my boyfriend about it and he was like, there's so many great things. Like any sort of community center, whatever that is, like maybe the rock climbing gym, maybe get a membership to the rock climbing gym and just be intentional about going Monday, Wednesday, Friday, show up at the same spot a couple days a week. And eventually you're going to start seeing people there over and over. And that's how you kind of build friendships. But I wrote down some other ideas. I said, climbing gym, pottery studio, volunteer group, skate park, like interest groups, like book clubs or whatever that might be. Step out of your comfort zone, go to one of those that at least interests you. And then you'll find people that have similar interests or similar values. I think friendship is built off of a couple things consistency and shared interest or values. And so just you being mindful about showing up to that same skate park a couple times a week is gonna be the key to really finding people that you vibe with if you're looking for new friends, new community, and a new spot. Something else that I wish someone would have told me as I was starting over is people are so much more understanding when they know you're going through a big life transition. So go ahead and use that opportunity to say no to the things that you don't want to do. I'm a person that really struggles with obligation. I feel like I need to be doing a lot of things. I get in my head about it. Nobody's making me, but I just don't want to disappoint people. But people recognize like, oh, she started a new job. Oh, she just moved here. Oh, she's going through a really hard breakup. And they're not going to hold it against you if you say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'm sorry, I don't really have the capacity for that right now. I'm sorry, I'm trying to take things a little bit slower right now. And kind of almost like trim the fat of the things that don't fill you up, bring you joy, or um, have meaning or value to you or the people around you, and be more intentional with like what you fill your time with. A lot of people said, do a social media cleanse if you're going through a big change. Like it's easy to, to see little reminders that might bring up bad feelings. Like of course, easy one is if you're going through a breakup, um, mute or unfollow the person you were with, maybe their family, maybe people that are really close to them if you don't want to see them tagged in stories and all that type of thing. But I would also say in the world of being intentional about social media, seek out people who inspire you who are in a similar phase of life as you. Like if you went through a divorce, um, I found other people online that were young and divorced and seemed to be doing really well and followed them because that made me feel inspired that things will be okay. I can have a healthy, thriving life. Cut back on the people that make you feel bad, follow the people that make you feel inspired and good, and just do almost like a social media audit. When you change something big in your life, it can feel absolutely overwhelming at all the things you need to do. Like if you're moving because you're going through a divorce, it's like, I need to find a lawyer. I need to figure out the name change process. I need to get my own bank account. I need to find my own apartment. I need to set up the utilities. I need furniture. I need, and like your brain just goes through all these things. I'm moving states. I don't have doctors. I need to find doctors. Like everything can feel so overwhelming if you look at it all at once, but taking it day by day and being like today, today, all I need to do is pick out a couch. That's all I need to do. That's the only thing I need to worry about. I'll figure out the next thing tomorrow um, is really helpful. And also similarly, finding something every day that really brings you joy. If you're like so absolutely overwhelmed with all of the newness and all of the things on your to-do list, being like, you know what makes me feel really happy and centered is just taking a 30 minute walk. So I'm gonna make sure I take a 30 minute walk at some point today because that makes me feel good. Or I'm gonna romanticize trip in my neighborhood to the corner coffee shop and I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna just look out the window and give myself these 20 minutes to just absolutely vibe. <laughs> Whatever it is that just makes your day feel a little more calm, peaceful, joyful. Be intentional about working those in instead of feeling like you have to get everything figured out before you can start enjoying it. Of course, a lot of people recommended therapy. If you have the um, financial ability to do some form of therapy, whether it's online, in person, group therapy, whatever, that was hugely helpful to me in navigating a big change. I couldn't recommend it more. You know, I think it's so healthy. Next is kind of a reframing thing. Uh, let's be honest, starting over is not always a choice. Sometimes it is, but if it is something hard like your spouse has a new job and you have to move with them to a new state. Maybe that wasn't your choice. Maybe you're mourning the life that you lost. Something that helped me reframe is like, what are the things that really excites me about the idea of this change? And so like for me, 
moving back to Texas was like, I'm really excited to be close to my family. So since that's something that feels good about this change, even though this, this starting over was not necessarily my idea, I'm gonna really lean into that. I'm gonna schedule a coffee hang with my sister on Monday and dinner with my parents on Friday. And I'm gonna reach out to this cousin on Sunday. What's, what's even one tiny little thing that sounds exciting about this change? And then how can I really incorporate that into the process? Lastly, I feel like when you start over in one way or another, you're usually cutting something out. A lot of times, not always, but a lot of times you have more hours in the day because you're not so ingrained in a routine anymore that was just expected of you. You have a little more freedom with the hours in your day. What are some goals or habits that you've always wanted to do? Maybe what's something that you've been curious about doing that if you're going through a breakup, the person you were with didn't make you feel like you were capable of or made you feel like was a waste of time or money or effort or energy? Or what's something that is just like nice to do for yourself? If it's like taking an hour a week to paint your nails at home, take those extra hours and be like, I get to spin this on me now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign up for the tap dancing classes that I've always wanted to do. And I know that I am 35 and my partner made me feel like I was too old to do something silly like tap dancing, but I enjoy it. And I'm gonna take these newfound hours that I would have spent making them dinner, spend it on myself. These hours are mine now, gonna spend them on me. Last but not least, I wrote down some direct quotes from y'all that I at least was like, ooh, that was good, or just felt inspiring or wise, and I'm gonna read them in no particular order. But this person said, lean into what you feel instead of what you think. I thought that was really good because I feel like we can think that we should be doing more, we could think that things aren't right, but take care of your heart <laughs> when you start over and when you go through change. Don't be too hard on yourself logically. You don't have to get it right the first time. You're allowed to start over as many times as you need to. I liked that because I feel like we can tell ourselves like, this is my one shot. I'm gonna start this new job and like, this is my one shot. It's big and it's scary, so I gotta get it right. But it's, you absolutely don't have to get it right that first time. You can start a new job every three months for the next five years until you find something that feels right. And that is so okay. It is so much better to do that and then find something you love than be stuck in something that doesn't really fulfill you for your whole life. This person said, I found it was helpful to clean out my space during this time. It gave me peace and clarity. And a lot of other people had said, I had belongings that just like reminded me of the past and it didn't make me feel good. So I finally got rid of them and that made me feel better. So whether it's rearranging your room to signify like, this is new, this is a new time. My bed was over here and now it's over here. Or if it's like my ex gave me that and every time I look at it, it makes me a little bit sad. Donating it, putting it in the attic, just getting it out of the way. Don't be afraid to ask questions. You're not gonna know everything and that's okay. And I thought this was really good whether you're starting a new job. I know that you wanna be like, oh, I got this, but People, I think, like to answer questions. It makes them feel valuable as well. Just like earlier when I said people like to help you out. Or if you're in a new city and you're at the, at the coffee shop and you start talking to someone, you're like, what are your other favorite coffee shops in this area? I wanna check more out. Don't be afraid to ask. You don't have to know at all. And I think that it's a good, almost like first bonding point when you're getting to know somebody. Act like the person you wanna be in the new role, even if you feel like you're faking it at first. And I feel like this is probably in terms of a, a job or a work environment, but I think it could be in terms of a lot of things. Like I think perhaps if you're like, I have struggled with patience my whole life. And in this role and this, you know, new season, this new job, this whatever, I want to be a patient person. So I'm going to just pretend to be that, <laughs> you know, I'm going to lean into patience. Even if it's like a bit of a struggle at first, it's kind of like, you know, clean slate. I, I don't wanna be known as the person with a short temper anymore. I'm gonna try my best to start that fresh right now. I thought it was cool. The time you spent was not wasted, but it was necessary to help you see a new path forward. I think that's really good about not being bitter or resentful about what you had just stepped away from, feeling like that was a waste of time. I didn't even stick with it. There's so many lessons and learning experiences that I can assure you you got from that last job, from that last city, from that last relationship, from whatever that is, that you're gonna get to carry into this next season and just be so much wiser, more efficient, more compassionate because of it. I do wanna say, feel your feelings. Allow yourself to feel your feelings. But if a lot of time has gone by and you're just feeling like you're sitting in this bitterness or this resent headspace, that's only hurting you. 
not the people that might have hurt you. Taking the lessons without sitting in the pain for too, too long, I do think is healthy and helpful. And lastly, I thought this was good. Don't be afraid to break the rules that you had in your past life. Like feel free to experiment. Feel free to like try something new. Feel out what feels right. There's no rules except for like pay your taxes, be kind and don't hurt people, you know? Break the rules you might have had for yourself. Maybe you're like, no, I am known as like the workaholic and I am going to get everything done immediately. You know what? Maybe you don't have to be that person. Maybe you can be the person that like does what they need to do but isn't getting the pat on the back every single day from their boss. That's okay, see how it feels. Okay, I hope this was helpful. I think that this was fun. Thank you guys for um, sending in your tips, your quotes, your life lessons that you learned. I love you, thank you for being here. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I hope you don't hear the children in the apartment above me like absolutely running around. Okay, I will see you in a video very soon.